Hey everybody, it's Robert Dunt from ArtTop10.com and I'm very excited today to be chatting about this crazy and exciting exhibition that is in, currently in Romania. So, and it's called Beyond Other Horizons and I'm very excited Sorry. to be talking to Florin Ungaranu, Anna Hello. McNay and Peter Harrop. Hello everybody. Hello. 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 Thanks for having us. <laughs> That's cool. So these guys have put together this amazing exhibition and I'm very excited to hear more about it. So Anna, I think you were going to kick us off with a bit of a chit chat. Yeah, well, so the basic idea was I was involved in an exhibition um, a year ago that took place in Gdansk in Poland called Made in Britain, which was largely curated by Robert Kreisman, who set up or co-set up um, a group called Tempe British Painting a few years back or actually a lot of years back. Um, and Peter knew about this exhibition and the initial idea was that we wanted to take that or a version of it to Yash in Romania. Um, along the way, things got changed quite a lot. But a lot of the artists have remained the same. So there's a large, I'd say, the majority of the English, the UK artists are from this contemporary British painting group, although we have brought others in that we felt fitted the theme. Um, obviously, it got changed as well to works on paper because of logistics of transporting. Um, and then Peter had this brainwave of kind of bringing in Paul Salam, the Romanian poet. Um, Peter, you can talk about that. Yeah, Peter, Peter, tell us about this this wild poet guy. He sounds fantastic. Oh, well, uh, Paul Salam, um, he, he works primarily for around the sort of uh, 1920s to the 1970s. Um, he, he was a, a Romanian poet, but he worked in, 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 in Romanian, he worked in German, and he worked in English. Um, and he translated, and he was primarily a translator, but he wrote poetry. And the, the poetry then sort of took off. Um, and artists, uh, ever since um, he's been writing his poems, the Surrealists particularly loved, loved his poems. Um, and 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 from there, you know, uh, people like Anselm Kiefer and um, numerous artists over the years have, have been very inspired by his by by his work, particularly because of his word play. Um, but uh, the 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 idea of the the exhibition sort of came about. So so I've been I've been working um, with the Romanian Cultural Institute since about two thousand and six, um, and and from from there on, um, I've been putting together exhibitions with the, the Royal Academy um, and, and building a relationship with Romania. And Florin came along to one of those exhibitions at the, the Royal Academy, and he thought, um, you know, maybe maybe this might be a good idea for Romania. And so and so we've been slowly, you know, for a very long time, sort of build, building the idea that you know there there could be parallels uh, with the artists working in the UK and the artists working in Romania and contemporary British art and contemporary Romanian art has has um, some amazing uh, new thinking going on within it. Okay, it and, sounds, uh, sounds really, really and, and So what, what we did was um, uh, we, we took this, this Romanian poet because he's got links with the UK and continental uh, uh, painting um, and and we looked at three themes. So it was um, a, a poem called Makespeare Road. And we looked at three themes of walking, language, and otherness within the poem. And perhaps this might be a, a fairly good point at which Anna might, might read the poem. Over to you, Anna. I'm, I'm looking forward to this bit. This is the highlight of the poem reading. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> and and, and it's, it's interesting. It's, the poem is actually about a, a street in London, isn't it? It is. So he wrote it um, in 1968 after he'd been to stay with his aunt who lived a few streets away. Um, he went on a walk at Easter and Passover time um, and then wrote this poem about, sort of about it. But, but he has this, he really deconstructs his syntax. So it's yeah. not the easiest poem to read at the best of times. And I'm also going to be reading the German first or attempting to read the German first. So. The best bit. Okay, so Mates We Road by Paul Salam. Die der zugewinkte Stille von hinten schritt eine Schwarzen. Er zur Zeit die magnolienstündige Haube vor einem Rot, das auch anderswo Sinn sucht oder auch nirgend. Der volle Zeithof um einen Steckschuss, daneben kenne ich. Die scharf gehmulten, häufigen Schlücke mit Luft. Vertag dich nicht, du. 
Okay, and then the English, we're using the translation. <laughs> Thank you. The translation by Michael Hamburger, which is perhaps the best known translation. The stillness waved at you from behind, a black woman's gate. At her side, the magnolia houred half clock in front of a red that elsewhere too looked for its meaning. Or nowhere, perhaps. The full time yard around a lodged bullet, next to it, cerebrus. The sharply heavened courtyard gulps of co-air. Don't adjourn yourself, you. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Uh, very nice. Very nice. It's got so, a... It's, so, it's, what, it's, so what you find with that is that he's walking down a, a street called Macy Road in London in, in, in 1968. But at the, at the same time, during his visit, there's, there's, there's the death of Martin Luther King and also... Um, an assassination of one of his friends. And that's why he's interweaving those very visceral images of, of bullets and, and, um, and wounds and scars into, um, into what is quite a mundane street, a Magnolia Line Street. And those, um, and those Magnolia streets remind him also of his hometown in, in Romania at the time. So you've got this wonderful overlap of, of moving between London and Romania and also what is going on just within that those three days, three that's four perfect. days. That's perfect because it's almost what we're doing right now, moving between London and yeah. Romania. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love I love the way the poem finishes, both in German and English, on a sort of oh it finishes on that sort of yeah. you're floating in the air as it ends. He has this habit of well that's part of the otherness of also bringing in like trying to get it away from being in the first person and invoking the, the, the other or the you, which is, yeah, exactly how this poem ends. So, so, so Florin, Florin, did you want to just give us a little uh, vibe on your feeling of the poem and how it relates to the exhibition at this point? It sends me a little bit the poem from Paul Celan to the music also of uh, Tom Waits, the Black Rider, and uh, the story with the, the Black Forest and so on. So it's... Uh, a little bit of uh, unknown things and uh, uh, ethereal things. So we were very happy to, all three of us, to be able to choose works uh, connected to these uh, three themes of walking, uh, language and otherness uh, to, to, to fit in somehow. To, and uh, it was a pleasure to, to work with Anna and Peter and to it was a back and forth of sending works and selecting and looking and uh, uh, sometimes uh, arguing a little bit about certain things, but in a very nice and constructive way. So we ended up with a beautiful show here at Yash. Oh, it sounds it sounds really, really good. So, so Anna, why, why not take us into one of the artists, first of all, maybe uh, on the whole sort of uh, walking theme that relates to the poem? Sure. So, I mean, a lot of artists use walking in their practice. And um, Salan actually described this particular poem as a walking and a walked up poem. So it's quite key to that. Uh, so one of the artists who we have from the UK um, contingent is Judith Burroughs, okay. who by, by trade, she's actually um, a proper or a music photographer. She's done a lot of um, on site, on scene shoots for like album covers and so on so she oh, wow. spends a lot of her time walking around kind of it's without without a purpose sort of often um, it's a moving meditation looking for sight looking for locations um and she also now makes artwork um which are kind of collages she layers them up with paint and she puts in lyrics and bits of map and um Mono prints, and she's more recently been doing also lithographs and sculptures. But these are all, she says, building up a narrative of location because they're inspired by these walks and these locations that she's done her other work on, which is her bread and butter. So in the show, um, it's actually more recent works of hers, so less less of the layering. But we've got two lithographs um, okay. off Madaba Road and on the Cogitale Road, and I think they're both quite eerie and dark. And I think the overarching idea there is of of being lost and of being alone, but there are still elements of human presence in, in the fact that you've got um, electricity wires or, or oh, cloud yeah. fields. But but yeah, it's very much about that idea of walking and discovery. 
No, it sounds it sounds really really cool. Actually, I like it. So so everything's got this sort of slightly otherness feel to it. Is is that right? Yeah, I mean, most of the works seem to have that, even if they're not yeah. in that. <laughs> if you put them in that room, yes. And P Peter, is is there a, is there a particular work by one of the UK artists that you feel also has that otherness? That, um... Well, we we had a number of the artists actually come out and speak. Um, in terms of well, in terms of otherness, I mean, Nabi Price is one one artist that I, I find very very interesting. He's taking that very simple uh, idea of walking um, and 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 um, just recording small areas of of, of the street, um, you know, debris or or um, street signs, and, and 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 building a sort of poetic, a new kind of poetry out, out of that. Um, and and I I I I feel that uh, the the way in which these artists have focused so intently on on the minutiae of things to expand towards a new language um, is the same way that say Paul Salan does with his careful analysis of, of of just one word at a time breaking it up um, and, and find, finding um, finding a new a new uh, perspective on things. Well, it's, that, that's a nice parallel, actually. And um, I was chatting to Nabi on these lockdown interviews, and there's also often something quite strange in the pictures. Something traumatic or disturbing has often taken place where they are, aren't they? So they're quite sort of... There's, 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 there was crime scene tape on, on one of his paintings or on, on a little water... You know, it's a it's a exquisite little watercolour, but it's, it, it looks like it's got crime scene tape or, you know, it looks like something, something untoward has happened. And uh, and and you're you're left thinking this is very nice, but it's also a little bit. You have to you sort of feel what could have happened here. Yeah. Or has happened because he's a little bit obsessed yeah. with motorbikes. I think. Yeah. <laughs> In a good way. In a good way. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Florin, how are you doing? I think we we're getting a reasonably good connection of you. Is is there a Romanian artist? Do you feel who has that otherness vibe as well? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to. Win. Uh, a painter from uh, West uh, Romania is called George Fickle, uh, in English George, George Fickle, okay. and uh, he's more or less, he's my age, around 50, and uh, he paints uh, uh, interiors of churches and uh, he brings in uh, some sheep and some cows and uh, we have uh, four of his works in our show and uh, uh, it depicts the interior of a church, a Byzantine icons and a priest, and uh, it's got an unsettling feeling about it and uh, uh, um, connects very well with the idea, this idea of otherness, of uh, something strange, something spiritual, something happens there. Uh, at first glance, you think it's uh, just the idea of a priest Praying, but uh, if you watch carefully his works, you discover a lot of other things that uh, have a very contemporary feel to them. Yeah, so I went and saw George Fickle's work at the um, the Romanian Cultural Institute in London, and they're these very, very big canvases, uh, the, the ones that were on at the ICR, and the the paint is literally disintegrating off the surface. Um, it's it's um, uh, all that entropy. And the collapse of these these beautiful buildings with these uh, cattle roaming around. It's quite dark, quite gothic, um, and some of the cattle have been slaughtered, just hanging in the churches and that sort of thing. It, it's really, it's really sort of, it's it's not, it's a it's a funny, it's it's a sort of um, macabre take on the picturesque and the sublime. I mean, it sounds really good. I mean, I, you, you guys have obviously got a very nice, clear kind of theory for this whole otherness and all the rest of it. And, and I think, Anna, you, you've got another couple of otherness artists, Kate Montgomery and Katja Kvasova. Uh, I'm glad you said her name. <laughs> no, I don't need to. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Kate Montgomery, she's done a series of ink drawings. And I think we put four of them in the exhibition. Um, and she says that she specifically set them up to describe and disrupt the narrative. So yeah, um, they're sort of almost fairy tale like, and she has um, she has interior scenes, but there's 
something from the outside coming in. So for example, with finishing up, where the curtains are blowing in from the outside and it brings this kind of uncanniness <laughs> inside. So um, talking about her own work, she actually says the, the pictures look like stories, but do not tell them. So it is this kind of, yeah, again, otherness, something that's there that's not quite there, inside, outside, gothic fairy tale element. And then Katya Kapasova, um, she's, <laughs> she, I, I love her work. I mean, I love everyone who we've chosen this work, obviously, but um, she, she's very much questioning about the idea of otherness and um, what it means to be other. And she's saying, surely we're all other. We're all living in our own worlds that we create in our own minds. And it's about perspective and our own, our own idea of reality. And that, that is the otherness. So that's what I think she's trying to capture in her her works is that inner mind, illness, all that, that chaos, whatever you have in your mind, but yeah. that's your own happiness. No, no, it sounds really, it sounds really cool. Now, now let's just let's catch up with Florin. <laughs> Florin, for, for a moment of otherness, you've been uh, ejected from the uh, museum. <laughs> yes, because it's uh, closing time in the galleries. No, so, no, that's cool. hello. That's cool. It's closing time, so officially they have to shut down the museum. So, uh, yeah, but it's uh, it's lovely. We've seen a little bit of Narbi Prize there. And, yeah. yeah. So, so the whole otherness thing. When, when you put this together, you didn't know there was going to be a a sort of real world otherness taking place, do you? With the whole uh, pandemic. Yes, and so lockdown. It, the, the whole experience. Yes, the whole experience was uh, a, a very funny. The whole process of bringing over the works and uh, and so on. It was uh, quite an experience. No, but, uh, uh, and I guess with the lockdown, the lockdown made it quite surreal as well. Yes, yes. Exactly. And so, because a lot of the British artists, we all went out for the opening, um, Peter and I, and then Jenny, our assistant curator, and about 20 of the artists and we literally got back the day before I think everything was closed and shut down. Yeah. Because otherwise you'd all still be there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We we, 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 um, we we went all the way up to sort of the into into Moldova. We went to look at the chapels. The paint I I had this desire to look at the painted chapels of, of Moldova. Um so I took these the guys on a bus tour around Sukovica and um uh, Veronex and all those where there's just there's nothing up there except for these um, uh, monastic nuns okay. who bang sort of sticks of wood and um, and we look, we looked at these fantastic chapels and they're, they're as good as Giotto if not better I say they're better than Giotto mm -hmm. uh, but I'm biased um, but um, but it was a, a wonderful thing but literally as we were so we come back from what is almost the Ukrainian border uh, Moldovan border. Um, to find that you know the country was being shut down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's crazy, man. We, we could have been stuck. We could have been yeah. stuck if it was one day, two days later. So we did so, have a swimming pool in the hotel, though, so it wouldn't have been all bad. <laughs> you're right. It was a, it was the most fantastic sort of um, uh, sort of uh, communist style hotel, wasn't it, Anna? It did it. it, it Very was, uh, <laughs> I bet. A lot of orange, but yeah. <laughs> So, so Florin, do, do, do you want to chat about a couple more of the artists in there? Perhaps we've, we've done a bit of the otherness, maybe to do with the language or walking uh, themes? Oh, well, uh, yes, I uh, Can you hear me well? Yep. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, uh, so some other guys that are very nice in the, the show. It's... Uh, it's another Romanian guy from Bucharest. It's called Cosmin Paulescu. And uh, I love very much uh, the fact that uh, uh, he's done a map of UK and a map of Romania. And uh, he put, arranged, uh, he exchanged the flags of the countries. So the Romanian territory has got the UK flag and the UK has got the Romanian flag. <laughs> and uh, no. I find it very... Uh, Ironic, very funny, and um, it's uh, full of metaphors, especially these days. It happened even during the corona situation uh, to see some people traveling from uh, Romania to either UK or Germany or 
So it's a very funny kind of work. And uh, yeah, it's uh, then we have uh, another artist, uh, Matei Bejanaro. He showed his work at, uh, he made a beautiful film uh, showing the first time his work at Tate Modern in 2007. And uh, he practically, basically, he put together 250 Romanians living in uh, UK. And uh, he made some sort of performance, uh, all, almost muted, just in front of Tate. And uh, you can see on the background, uh, St. Paul. And uh, his work also deals with uh, these issues, uh, social economic issues, with uh, people changing places and so on. And uh, uh, at my turn, I, after having lived uh, 14 years in London, and also becoming a British citizen also. It's, uh, I can see from uh, many points of view these uh, matters. And uh, also, the, it's, it's very good to having this show to, com to look and to compare the Romanian art scene with the British art scene, especially the London one. And uh, it's, uh, it's very good because uh, by bringing the, all these artists together here at Yash Art Museum, we can see and uh, com compare somehow the uh, the different kind of mentalities and uh, conceptions and uh, the way of working. And uh, I was very happy to to have those years in London because uh, uh, I discovered so many things, and I'm happy to bring them over here to Yash and to share them with the Romanian artists. No, it's it's, it's really really nice. So so Anna, is there a sort of I think we were talking earlier about like there's similarities or links or resonances between the Romanian and the UK artists. Is there anything in any resonance you think goes between them in particular? Um, I mean, in terms of the fact that we were selecting to try and put these themes and relating to the poem, obviously there are going to be some similarities. Mm. And um, I think some of the work is very different. A lot of it, you can see the influence still from communism, but a lot of it is very, very contemporary as well. So you wouldn't actually necessarily think, oh, right, yeah, that must be Romanian, that must be UK. Um, and I think the way of Florian, actually, to credit, he did the hang um, and he's done a brilliant job and he, he sort of integrated the UK artists and the Romanian artists really well. So when you walk around, you don't know which are which. Some of them you might, but you might have your suspicions, but it's it, it, so it brings up that questioning of, oh, what are the similarities, what are the differences between what's happening here in the UK and what's happening in Romania, which I think was also part of the idea of what we wanted to yeah, try yeah, and yeah. do. Yeah, so, so Peter, what, is, is there one sort of similarity you notice between the Romanian? Well, and the I, I, think, um, I think what you find amongst most contemporary artists today is their, their emphasis on the materials and how the materials uh, translate even if it's just, um, I don't know, using using mud, for example, if you're if you're doing something relating to a, a river scene or what have you, actually just kind of building, build, using using the materials around you um, in order to to uh, give a give a sense of, of 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 presence and 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 convey the 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 poetic within within the the pictorial. Absolutely, um, and and, and that, that, car that carries through. You know, uh, I mean, we, we have a word, we have a sort of terminology for it, which is sort of radical uh, materialism, uh, radical materialist ideas, where you, you basically view everything from your breathing through to 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 the things in front of it can all be used for art. Yeah. Um, and you see that in An in someone like Ansel Kiefer's work, he will be adding, he will be adding words, he'll be adding. Um, Paint, but then you'll also be adding twigs and and bits of yeah. detritus from from you know uh, uh, play, uh, you know armaments that he's left out rusting out in his backyard or what have you. <laughs> no, that's really cool. And, and and so that would be a similarity. So what what difference would you say you saw between the uh, Romanian and uh, UK artists? Um, in terms of a difference, I mean, I you you, you sort of noticed that 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 we have different. Uh, very, very different approaches, but 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 it's it's becoming more similar in in the same way the, the Matteo Bejinari. It's all international now. Mm. I, I I wouldn't really like to 
to separate out the the UK artists from the Romanian artists. Um, I, I I think that would be a, a, a mistake in a way because we're we're all actually talking quite a similar language, which is rather it's rather wonderful. You know, twenty years on from mm. uh, the or whatever it is now from the fall of the the, the Berlin Wall and and Ceausescu's demise. Um, you would have probably, you know, you would have really noticed it under Ceausescu, but 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 now, um, but now we're all singing off roughly the same hymn sheet in a way. That's really interesting. Actually, it's actually really interesting. It's a really good point. I, I love that, Florin. I love the fact that you um hung the exhibition with all the different works, you know, jumbled up as it were, so you couldn't tell which were Romanian and which were English. Was was that something you always wanted to do when you were hanging it? I uh, I followed uh, somehow uh, my classical training uh, in, uh, from Romania and uh, also after doing the goldsmith's years, uh, the master, uh, putting these two worlds together. I followed my intuition and, uh, and uh, thinking about uh, what the works uh, might say and to create some sort of dialogue between them. So... Uh, when I when I hung them, uh, first I arranged them at like uh, the guys are doing uh, the Royal Academy, the academicians. I put them on the floor, okay. and I started to to play with them, to uh, following my way of thinking about uh, color and um, subject and so on. So uh, it it uh, it's. Uh, I think the idea of who's British and who's Romanian uh, uh, it kind of disappeared. For me, it, what was more important, it was the fact to the works to, to come together and to create some sort of uh, dialogue, to create uh, sparkling ideas, to create some kind of weirdness, strangeness, uh, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, is, is, is there uh, a... I'm a uh, have you got a I'm favorite? Glad. Have you got a favorite couple of paintings that are near each other that, that you were really pleased to sort of set up to play off each other? Uh, yes, yes, I have uh, something that I love very much. The uh, it is the work, one work from uh, Gheorghe Fickel with the dark interior church, and uh, nearby uh, it's a beautiful self-portrait from uh, another Romanian painter. And uh, also very close to that, it's uh, up, there are two abstract works from Tom Palin from uh, Leeds. Okay. Um, and they, they they work very nicely together. Also, I like in the, the room where Peter work is uh, the big tree, uh, very close to Georgi Fickel's work uh, called Procession. Uh, and uh, you can see the, the sky in the procession from Fickle, it's a beautiful grey, a little bit like an English grey, like a traditional English, and works very nice with Peter's, uh, Peter's painting. And uh, nearby, also near Peter, so it's Peter and uh, uh, Georgi Fickle with procession, and then a small work that uh, looks very nice and from Mandy Payne. Okay. It's a beautiful uh, block of flats, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's wonderful. And also, there we have uh, just under Mandy Payne, it's uh, Alex McIntyre, if I pronounce correctly. A very nice abstract work that could be uh, taking me with the, to the idea of a contemporary constable in a way. Okay, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Not, that's near, near that is somebody called Simon Carter, for example. And Simon Carter is one of the big key people that set up um, British contemporary painting with okay. with Robert Prizman. Um And he he has a um, he goes and works in a very tall uh, tower just near near um, East Berkeley, near near um, Colchester. Um, mm -hmm. And he visits that every day, and he just makes um, he keeps remaking. Paintings of the same mud flats, uh, looking out, looking out towards the sort of Essex coastline, um, and they're, they're, it, so the, the themes just kept getting picked up again and again, even though they're incredibly fast contemporary uh, uh, lyrical paintings. They're not they're not 
sort of uh, what you would call a traditional landscape, but um, but they but those themes that run they run through the Romanians, through the British, and it, it just it hangs together in a in a lovely way that you can sort of um, uh, just just see see the lyricism running through. Oh, just to go good. back to um, Alex McIntyre, actually, because she lives really near me here, just through a field, actually, five <laughs> minutes walk in Hertfordshire, like in the middle of fields and stuff. And so a large part of her practice is about going, again, again walking and taking her sketchbook with her. Um, and it's that she then goes back to the studio and it's about, so she's inspired by the landscapes and the, the, the skyscapes in particular, but what she's doing is is not, painting a skyscape or painting a landscape it's very much about she sees that as painting poetry and capturing hmm. different marks that have recurred um so she'll make lots of sketches and then look for the commonalities between them and she works with gesso and ink so it's it's very much working into the canvas or the board that she works on actually um and yeah it's about the mark making it's much more sculptural it's so on yeah. the surface it might look sort of constable like uh, i'm sorry i'm not contradicting you sorry but it's very <laughs> Very much more about the mark making and the sculpturality of it all. Okay, oh, yeah, it sounds it sounds really really nice actually. I, uh, I wanted to mention something else. It's uh, uh, another a lovely association we have it with uh, the work that we have here on the poster for, from David Mab. Okay. Uh, who bring it down a bit, Florian. Bring it down so they can see. Okay. Okay, it's like that. Uh, the work, uh, the work from David Mab. You have a nice view. Yeah, yeah, good view. That we have it on the poster, and it's uh, uh, David Mab. He's the painter, and he's the director of MFA Fine Art from Goldsmiths College. And we are very happy to have uh, his two works in our shows. And uh, this work is called uh, Construct Sixty Nine uh, Daisy uh, Stepanova, and he actually works. Uh, uh, on uh, William Morris wallpaper, he paints uh, um, uh, constructivist images from Russians from 1920s, 30s. So he's a little bit of a socialist, yeah. so, as, as it used to be, as it used to be William <laughs> Morris. And uh, I, I loved, I loved the association of this work from David Mab. In the gallery uh, underneath his work, it's a work from a Romanian. Uh, artist and he's done a, a switch where you have the hammer and the sickle. No, okay, very cool, I like it. <laughs> That's really cool. Yes, so it's, a, it's a very graphic work with the hammer and the sickle, which, uh, by the way, you are asking the differences or things for Romania. And uh, uh, the, uh, I, I love this association between uh, the work from David Mab uh, and the hammer and the sickle from the Romanian guy that is called Radu Harnariu, because that hammer and the sickle is still a little bit actual after 30 years after the revolution. Yeah. So you, you still uh, you still find here and there a little bit of uh, of the remains of the day somehow. Okay. Uh, something is yeah. something is left in that in the attitudes of some people in the way they think and so on. So it's um, uh, it's funny to see this association. From David Mab, that is David yeah. Mab is also interested in uh, Romanian art scene. He traveled to Romania in the 1970s. Oh wow! And, uh, That's yes, a long yes, time ago. Yeah. Yes, Check yes, it out. and uh, uh, probably uh, when I applied to Goldsmiths, this was one of the factors that uh, they offered me a place. I've got it. <laughs> Okay. No, that's that's cool. So, so I th I'm 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 loving it. So I think we've we've touched on the walking, the otherness, but we haven't done much on the language. Anna, did you want to maybe chat about um I think Deb Covell and Fiona Robinson and the language relationship? Sure. So yeah, Deb Covell, we've got an early work from her, um, which um is it's a little bit different from what she does now, but it's very much a palimpsest of layers. So she would start off; it's almost like journaling, and she would be writing, writing on the writing on the paper and then writing over it and painting over it and layering it up and so what you see on the surface is a bit like with one of Salan's poems what you see on the surface might appear quite simple quite plain but actually there's a lot lying underneath it if you were to dig which obviously we're not asking you to go in and <laughs> the layers of work, but maybe to stand and imagine some of the stuff that's beneath it and then Fiona Robinson she's completely different so she's um 
inspired not by language per se, but by music. So some of the works that we've got by her, um, let me check, we've got one that encompasses John Cage's works, The Prepared Piano, we've got one inspired by Debussy, we've got one inspired by Chopin's piano music. And um, she sees her, her, her drawing as creating, um, if you like, a, a transcription of the, the music. So it's not an equivalent or an alternative, but she sees it as almost a conversation between the artist and the musician. And again, this idea of building up a dialogue, as we've said, is central mm. to Salam's poetry with the, the I and the you. So That's really interesting, actually. And, and, and also, I think Freya, Freya Purdue, is that her name? Freya Perdue, yeah. So um, she she is very much. She says her starting point for every painting that she does is about trying to find a visual language, a, her own visual language, a new visual language, um, and it's about mark making. So if you look at, so for example, Lament Series Three, um, which we've got in the show, it's one of three of her works. Um, it looks very much like a hieroglyph almost, and it, yeah, she, that's. The starting point is to kind of explore, like, say, the mark making and see see what comes out of it. That sounds really uh, cool. So, 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 Peter, we we yeah. we were we were lucky to have um, Harriet Tarlo and Judith Judith Tucker actually come come out to um, Romania and give a recital of that. We had a British Council symposium, um, and and they we were intending just to sort of chat for a couple of hours with our Romanian colleagues, but it went on for about six hours, <laughs> and part of that was was. Um, was uh, Harriet and uh, and and and, and Judy, uh, Judy just um, uh, reciting some of their their poems and showing their images? Uh, with they, they they might do a walk along a canal, for example, and um, and Harriet will write write a, write a poem, and, and, and Judy will make some, make sketches. A little bit. What I found when I was doing, I in 2010 I put on a constable exhibition, oh. and what I found was that that they were. Um, uh, Constable was very systematic in the way he made um, his painting. So what they, what he would do is he'd walk very, very li- in a very linear way, mm. and he would record, you know, every couple of hundred yards. He would record something. He would record everything. He would record everything about about what it is that he was um, experiencing that day, and it's very accurate. And something similar ha- is happening with with Harriet and uh, and Judy, and they're doing that doing that spontaneously. Um, and and it's rather it's very lovely to see the poems next to uh, the visual works and, and the way the two spark off one another. Because if, if and if, the, something similar happened with with Paul Solan and his wife, uh, you know, it, um, they they were they were sparking off each other. You know, Solan's wife was was making etchings, um, and and Solan was writing the poems. That's really interesting. I didn't know that Solan and his wife worked together. Um, and if, if you look at the lockdown video I made with um, Harriet and Judith, uh, you can see those long strip uh, little books. Yes, I've got one of those, yeah. Have you? Yeah, well, one of them's a strip yeah, of poems. They're given us one, yeah. And one of them's strips of drawings. They're absolutely fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Yeah. So, so, so one of the other people I've interviewed during the lockdown is uh, Emma Biggs. I don't know who, yeah. which of you wants to talk about the piece there, but it's actually one of the sort of consciousness raising pieces they put out. Well, it's, it's, it's a piece. It's, she, she made a series called Shepherd's Purse, where she's. Um, they were very spontaneous pieces where she was um, using a piece of cardboard and doing a, a, a quick study of a slightly endangered plant. Um, the one that we've got in the show is called a mouse-eared hawkweed or something like that. But she's she's um, they're intended to be temporary signs that she hangs outside of her studio to bring people's uh, environmental awareness um, of local flora and fauna as you're as you're walking around. And I think um, she's mentioned um, that she actually even goes around chalking graffiti on the, the pavement to to highlight you know that this this is a lovely beautiful weed. But it's a uh, more than the weed, and uh, <laughs> something that you can uh, just experience as a as a as a, as a gift, really. Um, it, it, and, uh, and so she's high- highlighting an awareness of yeah. that. It's it's really interesting actually because I, I've actually been to Romania about well, ten or fifteen years ago, I think, and it was so unspoiled the place. I mm. mean, you could go for a walk in the in the sort of forest area, and we saw a wolf just wandering around. Yeah, and there there's, wolf, there's wolves, there's bears. I'm from Transylvania. My family is from Transylvania originally, um, and so uh, yeah, exactly. I, I go back to rejuvenate once a year. Um, and, uh, 
And uh, yeah, they go back to choose the poker. And, um, <laughs> um, and 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 that's and the the I usually go for a walk within within the um, the gorges, the Transylvanian gorges there, and uh, and you can you can experience all of that for yourself, all the all the wildflowers and the and and hopefully spot a bear. It's quite funny that that, that r relates quite nicely to um, Emma Biggs's picture. Florin, uh, are, are there any other Romanian artists you'd just like to um, bring to our attention? Uh, yeah, uh, another artist that I like very much is uh, called Virgil Pargel, and uh, he used to be my uh, tutor at the uh, George Enescu Academy of Fine Arts when I started in '91, and by '97 I was transformed in the University of Fine Arts. Huh? And uh, he's, uh, he's in his 60s now, and it's, uh, 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 he, used, he used to be the student of a great Romanian master called Corneliu Baba. Hmm? And uh, uh, I love very much his work because it's very um, experimental and uh, he's very unusual kind of guy. He's very, uh, he used to take us uh, with the easels to go in the forest and to to paint and uh, even during the winter <laughs> we, yes yes we we're going in a small group uh, with the easel after us and colors and uh, you used to take us to, to paint in the nature and um, it's a very nice exercise uh, to do such things and it's lovely to see his work in the show and uh, he now lives and works in Bucharest and uh, it's a pleasure to to have his work here in the show, and uh, it's wonderful. And also, uh, we selected uh, a small work from uh, another painter here, uh, which is called Valentina Drutu, and uh, uh, she's also the director of Yash Art Museum. And uh, she works, uh, she's doing a kind of very genteel work, a little bit like Emma Biggs in a way, but uh, a little bit more. Um, Emma Bix is a little bit more pictorial in a way. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, it sounds, yeah. it, it's a lovely exhibition. I wish I could, I could pop over there. <laughs> it sounds really, really good. Uh, yeah, what is lovely is, uh, is the fact that uh, we had the full, after we had the support and the lovely galleries here at the Ash Art Museum. And uh, we had the full support from the British Council, UK. And the, the, the lovely director, Nigel Bellingham, came over the private view on the 3rd of March. And uh, also we had coming over 20 British artists wow. for the wow. private view. So it was a very, very wonderful group. And uh, it, was, it was really lovely because they were the first time here in Romania. Hmm. And uh, it was special to have so many of them coming over from London, from Manchester, from Sheffield or Leeds. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was it was wonderful, and we had the full support also from the Romanian Cultural Institute, which uh, Peter chased them down with the application for the full support for our exhibition. I don't know uh, how much was the grant, but it was lovely that we had their support and uh, from Bucharest. And uh, well, they're, they're always they're always very supportive. Uh, things I've I've been working with them since two thousand and six, so it's an sort of ongoing relationship. It, and um, and I find generally with with Romania that um, when because the infrastructure is still the cultural infrastructure is still there, um, probably from the Soviet era, um, yes. that, that you can actually go to somebody and say I would like to do this, and they will take it. To the top or to the appropriate person and then generally it will happen um so while well, in the uk when you're working in the uk there's there's a lot of people that have different um uh you know interests within it uh within, within a project and so so the the project remains quite pure if you see what i mean from from the point of conception through to the through to realization which i, I Quite enjoy that that method of working because you're you're going direct to the 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 Ministry of Culture essentially, which is a wonderful experience. That sounds really, really well, that, good. Yeah, that's very nice. It's uh, what I wanted to add. Also, um, uh, 
my brother that is uh, been named recently vice rector of the university of arts here in yash uh, he's got also a, one of his works in our show and uh, he's, he he made the, he started a nice collaboration with uh, with peter and anna also and um, during the british council symposium on the 3rd of march that happened here in the beautiful room king's room and uh, also uh, we are working now to to produce a catalog which takes some time but uh, it's lovely to to see it happening uh, uh, with hard work from everyone involved from peter from anna from the uh, my brother from the university and uh, uh, the the museum uh, director here valentina Druzzo, and the, the manager of the palace of culture la primera stratulato also so it's a uh, it's been an extraordinary um, collaboration in the sense that yeah. just from sparking something quite small you suddenly find that the five universities are suddenly involved and 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 you know museums are getting you know some a sort of small seed it, it, there's a there's a lot of um a lot of faith involved in these things in a way just yeah. just literally because you, you plant a very small seed and then suddenly as the project comes together all these other universities start start wanting to be involved and wow. so it's really lovely to have you know ucl leeds sheffield um huddersfield um yash all suddenly coming it, it really did come together last we still didn't really know whether it was going to happen two weeks before it was due to <laughs> open. but um but, but it, it happens and, and you you have to kind of you have to be prepared to roll with the kind of the, the last minute hair raising kind of. yeah yes we, we had we had a lot of uh, moments like this uh, unknown moments but in the end, everything uh, came together. So it's uh, uh, it's very lovely to work uh, also with uh, this kind of unknown moments because you don't know exactly what's going to happen. But uh, uh, it looks like some kind of good energy is above our show. So yeah. things they move in the nice direction. And I, I wanted to mention also another thing, another painter, a Romanian girl that is in our show. She's called Bianca Boros, and she's done a very abstract work from Mapesbury Road. And uh, she's uh, she's at the end of her uh, PhD thesis now. And uh, she started the collaborations with, uh, with a part of the British artists uh, to, to have a di direct dialogue with them. And she, uh, she will, uh, all this experience and exchange uh, with Matthew Collins and Emma Biggs and uh, Judy Tucker and Narby Price. Uh, they will appear in uh, in her final thesis at the university. Oh, nice! And, uh, it's, a it's a lovely thing because it's the first time I think in Romania when uh, some guys doing their PhDs uh, they uh, they have a, a direct collaboration with British artists, not from the books, not from oh, uh, books yeah, yeah. and so on. Yeah. yeah, that's really nice, guys. I've I've loved chatting. I think it's probably a a lovely point to finish where we're talking about these amazing things coming from a small seed and the beautiful energy of the exhibition. Um, anybody else got any final mega words or, or are you, you good for Go it? Go on then, Anna, you finish, you finish off, Anna. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we could get you to read the poem again. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been a pleasure working on this show most, most of the time. I'm not a last minute person, so it's also been stressful. <laughs> I've had to adapt and learn to have that trust, but it's, it's paid off in the end, I think. So, yeah. uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a wonderful collaboration and the, it re really has been genuinely a collaboration between us between yeah. us all um everybody chipping in and so we're we feel very you know, just really lucky to and one, one last thing i would like to add uh, after with, uh, the show ends here in ash we intend to take it to the capital of romania in bucharest somewhere yes. we are we still work in progress and we are looking for some nice places uh museum space or a nice gallery space and uh, after Bucharest uh, uh, one last uh, step should be back to London yeah, absolutely is that, is that song from Ed Sheeran uh, back to London <laughs> <laughs> you will and, see it Rob <laughs> I will see it <laughs> we'll come back we'll come back we'll join together again in London <laughs> for a live meetup 
Guys, it's been fantastic talking. I've loved it. I'm really hoping uh, everybody who can get to see the exhibition does. And uh, yeah, hopefully it will appear in London. So, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, I've loved thank it. Thank you very much. Thanks Cheers. a lot for, uh, for your kindness and the table of lovely evening. Yeah, thank you, Florent. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bomb buckler.